Good morning to every one of you. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. I'll ask us, let's pray. Praise God. Father, thank you for this morning, Lord God. You're a great God. You're a mighty God and you're a wonderful God. We can describe you, Lord, but more than that, help us to ascribe unto your name. Honor you, God, really your worth and who you are. As we adore you, we exalt you today. Please, Lord God, I ask you to bless the ears and the hearts, the minds of listeners, of every person present here, that they can receive something, O oh God, and understand something. And, and their lives can take a new direction in in. in, in Oh God, what is to be said here this morning? Use my voice, use my mind. Use me, Father God. To be a blessing and a help to my believers, to my brethren here this morning. I ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. There are some scriptures you would like to read uh, this morning. I, I think I'll read them. I would, um, because of our time, I would not be able to really expound on it uh, much, but I would like us to read it uh, to, to see what's, what's happening. There, there are some things we consider that as believers, we need to have a clear understanding like um, we did some sessions on understanding the supernatural. And this morning, I want to begin. Um, maybe we'll have, we'll have some follow-up also, but I would like to begin um, this morning on understanding worship. Understanding worship. I would not be able to say all that I need to say to you this morning, but whatever... Um, Time will permit me. I trust that it will be a blessing to you. Beloved, we as believers, we have, I must say, um, inherited or we have been made to believe that some things that are happening in our meetings is worship to God. And because we need our members, we need our beliefs to have a clear understanding what is biblical worship as to, what, as to some of the things that are happening and we considered as worship. We decided to begin this morning, at least to bring some measure of clarity about understanding worship. There are a few verses, um, there are a few verses I would like to read from John, um, John 14, sorry, John chapter 4, 19 to 24, then we'll go to Genesis and then we'll go to Matthew. Can I um, wish you up on the board? John 4, 19 to 24. Yes, John 4, 19 to 24. Sir, said the woman, I can see you are a prophet. Continue. Continue. Look at this now. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain. But the Jews claim that the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. Next verse. The next verse. This is the answer Jesus declared. Jesus declared, believe me woman, 
The time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Next verse. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do know. For salvation is of the Jews. 23. Yet a time is coming. And now is. We need to take that note now. You, he's, in his conversation he's saying a time is coming. And it's now. That time is now. When the true worshippers. That means there is a condition in worship. There is a condition there in worship. When the true worshipers, and if we got truth, what is the other side of it? What's the other version of truth? False worship. When the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seek. Verse 24. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. Let's go to Genesis 22, 1 to 5. So this is one aspect of a description of worship from the conversation of our Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to uh, um, another aspect here. We're going to see Genesis 22, 1 to 5. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to Abraham, he said to him, Abraham, he said, here am I. He replied, then God said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Moriah. You know what's something there? That sacrifice, that worship rather, involves some things that are dear to us. Go, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. Verse 3. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and saddled his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and, and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. Verse 4. He set out for the place God had told him about. Verse 4. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in a distance. 5. He said to his servants, look at this now. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey. While I and the boy go over there. We will worship. We will worship and come back to you. One more um, scripture. Matthew 4, 8 to 10. Again, the devil took him. That's the confrontation with the Lord Jesus. The devil and the Lord Jesus. The, the confrontation there. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. Next verse. Next verse. This is a statement of the devil. All this I will give you. He said if you will bow down and worship me. So the devil is seeking worship. Okay? And he promised rewards. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written. 
That means it's there in the word of God. For it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. There are more instances recorded in the Bible about worship, like where Jacob um, built a, an altar and he worshiped the Lord, where Moses um, and Abraham built other altars and he worshiped. I want to ask a question quickly. All these scriptures we have read from the Bible, from the Word of God, does it re resemble anything that we are doing here? Anything there you notice resembles what we are doing today in our service? Uh, don't give me an answer. You just keep your answer. I'm just asking this question. All right. Give it a thought. This is worship for our, for our understanding. This is recorded for us as to examples of worship. What is our understanding of worship? Is it music and singing? Is it fast songs and slow songs? I'm sure that time and again you have heard remarks like this. Worship was bad. After meeting, after one, after one of our South Road Sunday morning services, I'm sure that you have heard this. I've heard this several times. All right? It doesn't mean you're a bad person. No, no, no. It just means that, that um, okay, it doesn't mean you're a sinner or whatever. It just means that there's a certain understanding. But this is, I've heard comments like this. Uh, worship was terrible this morning. We had our same music. We had our singers. And this these were the comments. Worship was terrible this morning. I don't know what happened. Worship was terrible. Okay? There are other comments. We think about worship this morning. Worship was great, eh? Worship was great. Beloved, we would need a proper understanding of what worship really is. And we have seen here actually what was taking place and tells us about worship. We are seeing here clearly. There are sometimes I'm bringing clarity here. Please my Object is to bring clarity. No offense. You know, no rebuke to you, brethren. I just want to bring clarity. There are sometimes we hear also comments, you know, um, that why they had to cut the worship, the spirit moving, why they had to cut the worship. There are, from observation, there are times when, like, into 20, 25 minutes into our service, um, we see more participation. But on close examination, for per some persons that now the worship start after 20 minutes of same music, the same singing, wonderful songs, I mean great words, but after 20 or 25 minutes, it's now the, the, the the worship starts. That's, that's the belief of some people. The worship now starts. Beloved. Or the spirit now moving. Half an hour into the, the meeting or service, the spirit now moving. Was it that the Holy Spirit turned up late? He came late to the service this morning or what, which morning? Was he late? Um... Correction from the word of God is that he says, Lo, I am with you always. That means he was here at the beginning of our meeting, our service. He was here. I don't know. It took you, it took some persons um, a few minutes, half an hour or some time to really 
recognize he's here or whatever. The Holy Spirit is not late. He also said, the Lord Jesus said that, uh, you know, when, when you gather two, three, uh, we are a whole bunch here. When you, we, we gather in his name, he's where? In the midst, right here, right here, right here. So the moment we begin to come in, Holy Ghost is right here. So what then is worship? And what then is happening to uh, some of us? All right. I think um, it's not your fault for some of the terms that are being used. I think it is not your fault. I think it is how we see things here. And um, we trust that we can correct some statements. It's how we say some things. Beloved, I want to make this clear from Bible. All of us here are worshipers. All of us, each and every one of us here are worshipers. In John 4.10, in John, the, the verse we just read, in that verse, it's, it's said that um, we are men. We are men ought to worship. When the Lord Jesus replied, let me see if I can get this um, quickly. Just want to make a, a correct statement. All right. Not how I feel about things, but I just want to make a, a correct statement here. But um, it, it, it says here, it says, it says that um, when Jesus replied to the lady, because the, the dispute for the lady was the place of worship. That was her dispute. She needed clarity on that. And Jesus made it clear to her that lady, it's not, it's, it's not so much a big deal of where you worship. But it's a bigger deal of how you worship. And the Lord Jesus described how we ought to worship. All right. And he says that um, everybody ought to worship in spirit and in truth. That statement. The other statement also from Matthew. From Matthew um, about the temptation. Where the Lord Jesus made a statement and he says, um, he told the devil that God and only God that all men should worship. Worship belongs to God only. Okay? So these are statements that are very clear to us. Clearly from the word of God, we have seen that all of us here are worshipers. And there are sometimes we, we, uh, we have to blame ourselves that we do use some statements, you know, like, okay, now we're calling the worship team to um, come up. Um, please forgive us for this. Right? Well, all of us here are worshippers. All of us are worshippers. Okay, Bible says this. And this is clear. Alright, let me see in this few minutes how let me see what else can I say to you. Alright. Alright. I might just have like five minutes more. Let me see. When does worship begin? When does worship begin? Does worship begin when the music strike? Or when the singers start to sing? No, beloved. Worship begins when we recognize who God is really is. You hear this? Worship starts when we begin to acknowledge the source more than the resource. When worship begins, when we, be, when we individually, you, begin to acknowledge who God is, worship begins. 
It's not when the music actually strikes. Okay? Now, like we, worship is, I didn't even give the definition of, um, you know, what I have here of worship. But just to say uh, quickly, that worship is to ascribe credit to God for who he is and all that he has done. I would like us to get this if we ain't leave it anything this morning out of this message. Please remember this. That worship is ascribing to God all that for all, for all that he has done and all that he is to us. When we begin to recognize that, that's worship. Worship begins there. So it could be after the music or before the music or without the music. Worship begins. Hallelujah. We sang a wonderful song this morning. My hallelujah belongs to you. That's worship. When we ascribe to God what belongs to him. Hallelujah. We're, we're telling him what I have inside here belongs to you Lord. Belongs to you. Worship begins when we finally realize who God is. Yeah. And we have many examples in the Bible. That shows us where people worship the Lord. And people worship the Lord Jesus. Because they recognize who he is. Like um, in Matthew 2.11. The Bible tells us that wise men came and worshipped him. That's when he was a child, a baby, you know, an infant. Wise men came and worshipped him and they gave him gifts. Why did they worship him? They recognized who he was. Matthew 8, 2 tells us there were lepers who came and worshipped him because they recognized also who he was. They recognized he is the healer and they will be healed, so they worship him. Matthew 9, 18 tells us about a ruler who came to worship him. You know, the servant that was, that was sick this ruler recognized who Jesus was and he worshipped him. Hallelujah. I suppose he was without the assistant of the singers and the music. But his worship came when he recognized who Jesus was. Our worship must begin when we recognize who God is. Amen. That's when our worship, that's when worship begins. So, please get it clear that if our singers or musicians doesn't song right to you, it does not mean that we don't have worship going on. Please get this clear. If they don't sing the songs that will appeal to you, it does not mean that worship is not going on. Worship is when we recognize who God is, what he has done. I tell you this morning, the legs you came in here, you know, and walk in this church with, it is God who gave it to you. The knees and the ligaments, the, 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 the ligaments that hold these knees together, when you walk in church, it is God who gave it to you. And if you begin to recognize God has given you your legs, and God has given you a voice. And God has given you ears to hear. And eyes to see. And a voice and a, a mouth to speak. If we could recognize all of this. We will begin to worship God. And thank him for who he is. When we recognize who God is. We will begin to worship him. It's not in music brother. Brethren it's not in music. Thank God for the music. It has its place. And I'm good. I'm sorry I didn't reach the part to really explain the place of the music um, because of my time. The music has its place. But let me quickly say this to you. You know, we got to be careful what we consider as um, the music. Because what, what does worship involve? Worship involves some things. 
Worship involves, when we come to worship God, it involves, first of all, our head, our, 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 our intellect. Our intellect. Our intellect must be involved in worship. It means you must understand what we are doing. It involves our mind. Our minds must be there with God. You know, we shouldn't be here and cooking home, or we shouldn't be here, here and driving the car, or we shouldn't be here and, you know, our minds should be here with God. Focus on the Lord. What else does it involve? Our emotions. Now it comes to the music and the song and the singing and the fast and the slow and whatever. Our emotions should be involved in worshiping God. But what has happened that we have allowed our emotions to actually take control and dominate and we consider that worshiping God. So when the song ain't play right for us individually, uh, we ain't got no worship. That's a lie from the devil, brother. Brethren, that's a lie from the devil. We should understand what worship is, biblical worship. And um, our emotions are involved, but we should not allow our emotions to dictate the way we worship God. Never again say that worship sucks. You know, worship was bad. What was nice? No way. Your emotions were not fed. Sorry about this, you know. Things didn't touch your emotion. But our emotions are involved. How you feel also is involved in how we worship God. There are some of us that would be, you know, ex um, express ourselves more in, in a physical way. But that's okay. That's okay. But don't let that govern your state of worship. Don't let it. Thank God for the music. We, we like to have some music and some, you know, and some good singing and good music. Thank God for it. But that's only part of worship. Part, a little part of worship. Right, so our emotions must be involved. Lastly, I have to, uh, I have to stop here because of the time. Um, there are some other things that I would like. There are some other things I would like to say to you about worship, but clarity, bring clarity to you about worship. Lastly, what is involved in worship? Our spirit. Jesus said it. Our spirit must be involved. Our spirits must be involved in worship. And Jesus says that God is looking for people who would worship on, um, and at least have two conditions. Spirit, worship in spirit, worship in truth. I, I can't go on, but just to quickly say, what's worshiping in spirit? What's worshiping in spirit? True worship comes when you're born again. When you're born again. True worship comes from experience with God. When we begin to sing, there are sometimes some, um, some of our sisters dance here. Have conversation with them. It's an experience that brought them out to dance. There are some persons who would clap and, and really rejoice. Ask them, why are you doing this? It is an experience that caused them to express themselves. You know, when that special song is sung, bringing all that experience. Experience with the Lord helps us to worship him in a better way. We have many examples there. Like take, for instance, David. When David was on the hills, you know, he had experience with God. He, David realized that, that the grass that the sheep eat. Is God's. You realize that the sheep he's keeping is God's. You realize that the, the, the hook or, or, or I don't know the staff that he has. The wood that that staff was made of. It came from God. It came from a tree God planted. The harp he played. Whilst he was looking at the sheep the harp. The wood from the harp came from God. The strings came from God. His musical talent that he played came from God. Beloved, I'm going to just encourage my brothers and sisters who are singing and with music. Your musical ability comes from God. Don't, don't let your musical ability distract you and cause, you, cause pride or anything. It came from God. God gave you thanks. Thank God for the good voices from um, our team and the skill and the music. But it came from God. So when we could recognize that these things come from God, we are more in a better position to worship God. 
Quickly, um, I remember David and Goliath. Look at his statement. Look at his statement from, with David and Goliath. David says, you are coming to me with shield, uh, with spear and javelin. But I am coming to you. He didn't say, well, as a skillful slingshot, um, thrower or whatever. He didn't say that. Though he was skillful in it, he was very, very skillful in it. But he didn't say, I'm coming to you, you know, I'm, I'm coming to you with, as a skillful um, slingshot boy or whatever. He says, I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. Why did he say that? Because before, he said, I kill bear and I kill lion and I'll kill that big boy too. I'll take him. It was an experience, brother. It was an experience. So he was able to connect himself with God. And out of those experiences, he wrote one of the, 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 the longest book there with praise and worship. Out of experience. So, beloved, like Daniel who slept with the hungry lions. He slept there out of that experience. Brought Daniel closer to God. Out of David's experience brought him closer to God. I don't know what you're experiencing. But let me tell you. Let me bring comfort to you today. Whatever you might be experiencing. How difficult it is. It is. It is an experience that can bring you closer to God. Whatever it is. It can be an experience that brings you closer to God. The Bible says. David um, says, sing a new song. Sing a new song. David was able to sing, say, sing a new song because of new experiences. Oh, every new, a new experience is a new song. Every new experience is a new song. When last you sang a new song? When last? Your present experience can cause you to sing a new song and worship God. So, beloved, worshiping God involves our spirit. It involves our our experiences with God, and it involves revelation. I will close here. I will not be able to um, say much on revelation. Our revelation of God, who God is, you know, and, and the things that God would display. But let me see if I can give you a scripture on that. Wow, 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 wow. Benefits of worship. Wow. Okay, let me give you the scripture. Let me give you the scripture. Benefits of worship. I wouldn't be able to go there. Benefits of worship. Exodus 23, 24 and 25, 26. Yes, those three verses. Take them. You read them when you go home. Benefits of worship. God promised benefits when you worship him. He'll bless your bread. He'll bless your water. Hallelujah. He bless you with health when you worship him. There are benefits, brother. Brethren, there are benefits when we worship God. Hallelujah. So please, don't go with the understanding that if the music, the music, you know, ain't right and the song ain't right, we ain't worship. Worship is when you begin in your own life. And this is everyday story. Worship is everyday story. Not only here, everyday story. When we begin to recognize who God is, have a revelation of God, it helps us to worship in spirit and in truth. I trust that you're blessed. I trust that you're blessed this morning. That's why we're heading. But we're Father, we want to thank you, dear God, for your goodness, for your love. We want to thank you who you are. Thank you for bringing some clarity in our understanding of worship, biblical worship, what it really is. Oh, God, and Please forgive us from where we use slogans and, and statements that really was not correct. Please forgive us about that, Lord. But Father, help us, O oh God, to bring ourselves to that place where we, will, where we will worship like the Lord Jesus says. Worship in spirit and in truth. Help us to get to that place, Lord. Help us to get there. Help us to understand, Lord, that God, just we come into this house and assemble together, we can begin to worship right away. Help us, Lord God. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you real good.